Hello everyone, and welcome to the Engineering Toolbox channel, where I give you the tools you need to solve real-world engineering problems. Now in this video, I'm going to show you my top 17 tips and tricks for Microsoft Excel. These are tips that I promise will help you be more productive and get the most out of this great software. Let's check them out. Before we get started, let's take a look at our list. So first we're going to be going through tables, then using the control arrow key, quick fill, quick select, copy enter, advanced pasting techniques like transposed, formatting numbers as text in order to show leading zeros for example, multi-row insert, fit columns to page, print range, freeze pane, grouping, remove duplicates, status bar, opening multiple sessions or screens of Excel at the same time, macro recording, and custom toolbar and ribbon settings. Now there's a lot of good stuff in here, so I think this is going to be fun. Let's dive in. Tables, this one's one of my favorite. So to give us more control over a data range, especially long lists where we're going to be entering data into a lot, we can go to the insert tab, insert a table, and we'll say yes, my table has headers already. And it'll create a table for us. And what that does right away off the bat is we have banded columns so we can separate rows easily. Um, it also gives us these filters where we can uh, sort and filter data. And then it also gives us some cool control over the columns. So we can actually move columns around, do that kind of thing. Um, and then we can easily add columns here. So let's say this would be eight. And let's say we want to add a formula to this column. If we just enter in our formula and hit enter, it automatically fills that formula down. And then check this out. If I am going along and I'm entering data and then I get to the last column in my table and I hit tab, it'll automatically jump down and create a new row here. And let's just finish this out just to show you how this works. Eight and then watch this now 16 and it automatically calculates because that formula will always populate as we add rows to this table. So tables are one of my favorites. There's a lot of cool functionality there. Say we have a long list and we want to jump right down to the bottom. Well, we can just hold control and then press down on the arrow pad and it'll jump down to the bottom of that list or the last cell with a value in it. We can hit control up then to go to the top of the list control right to jump to the end and if we really wanted to we can hit control right again and it'll take us to the very last column in Excel and then if I go down and to the left it'll jump back to the next cell that it finds with a value in it so it's a really quick way to jump around most people when they want to fill a series down they'll take this bar and click and drag and there's nothing wrong with that but let's say we have a really long list and we just want to populate this and fill it all the way down to the bottom of the list. Well, if we just find this little corner in the bottom right of the selected range, and then we double click that, it'll actually fill that all the way down, hit control down, and it'll fill that all the way down to the last uh, value that it finds to the column to the left. So let's say we want to select all the data within this data region. Maybe we want to take it and copy and paste it somewhere else. We can just hold control and press A and it'll select all the data within this uh, data cluster kind of region right here. But just notice that it doesn't grab this out here. Now, another way we could have done this, similar to the control arrow key method before, how we can jump around like that, we can hold control and shift and it'll select the range between the two cells that it moved from. So if we do control shift arrow right key and then control shift arrow down key now we have that whole range selected as well one cool little trick is copy and pasting in excel if we hit control c to copy that and then we go over to another cell and actually just hit enter it'll actually paste that there for us we don't have to hit control v or right click paste so just another way some people prefer that method if we wanted to copy this, let's say we hit control C, we want to look at what other options Excel has for pasting. If we go to this paste special and look at all the different options they have, we can paste the formulas, we can place formulas and uh, number formatting, keep the source formatting, all of these different things, paste the values only, um, paste as links, all those different things. Um, but there's 
one particular one in this case that I want to do, and that is going to be a paste transpose. And check that out. So we can take vertically orientated data and then transpose it to horizontally. So that can be very useful at times. So Excel it does a really good job for the most part of formatting the uh, types of data that we're entering into cells um, correctly, but sometimes we run into issues where it actually tries to format the data for us, but we don't want it to format it in that way. And one really common place that I see this is when we're entering numbers that we want to behave like text. So a lot of times it'll be with leading zeros. So if we hit enter there, it takes those leading zeros off. Um, so what we can do is if we double click in the cell and put just an apostrophe in front of the numbers that we're trying to type and hit enter, um, it won't show that apostrophe and it'll actually give us a warning here saying this is a number stored as text. And that's exactly what we want it to do. We want that to be a text value. We don't need it to be a number. So sometimes on these longer part numbers, what happens is um, Excel will actually format it as scientific uh, notation like that. So again, same thing, we can just come up here, add an apostrophe, and then it'll actually format that as text for us then. Most people know that you can click on a row and right click, hit insert. I don't think everybody knows that you can actually select the number of rows that you want to insert, then right click, and it'll actually insert that number of rows. So I have a problem. I want all of these columns to print on one page. And you can see that the page line runs right there. And if we look in the print preview, we can see that there's actually two pages. It's cutting that last column off. And now a lot of times I see people trying to scrunch down columns to get things to fit and doing that whole number, but we don't have to do that. We can actually just go into our print tab here and then down in the scaling uh, settings, we can just fit all columns on one page. And that's just a quick way, it'll shrink it down so that all of the columns will show on one page. Say we only wanna print a certain region. Maybe we would just wanna print these first five columns. Well, we can tell Excel to only print those columns by selecting the print area. So if we set the print area to that range and then go to our print preview, we can see that only those columns or that range that we selected shows up in the print preview. When we have large lists, sometimes it can be hard to keep track of the column headers and to know what data we're looking at when we're down farther in the list. So what we can do is add a freeze pane so that the top column is always showing. And there's two ways to do this. So if we go to the view tab, and then we hit freeze pane, we can just select freeze top row and that'll freeze the top row right away. The other way to do it is to, let's say we wanted to freeze the top two rows. We can select the row below the row that we wanna freeze and then we hit freeze panes there and then we can see that those rows are then locked. Let's say we wanna make it really easy to show and hide data in our spreadsheets. Maybe for some kind of report like this, we wanna be able to hide the week values and only show the total monthly um, sales numbers. So if we go to the data tab and then find this group button and we hit group, it'll add this little um, collapsible tool on the side where if we hit the minus button, it'll actually hide those rows for us and then we can expand them later um, and then the one button up here is collapse all and the two is expand all. So if we had multiple groups, we could collapse or expand all with those buttons. So a pretty cool way to hide and show data there. So notice I have duplicated data in each of my columns here. So in my first columns, I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And let's say I don't want any rows to repeat with that first uh, number in this one column repeating. So I can actually select my data range here and then go to data, remove duplicates, but I only want to remove, or I only want it to look in the first column, this column one for duplicates and then delete the rows if there is a duplicate. If I were to select another uh, column header here, it wouldn't 
delete anything because it's looking to both those columns for duplicates. So there can't be a duplicate of this column and this column together. Hard to explain, I hope that makes sense, but basically this is how it works. I select the column with the duplicates that I wanna look at, I hit okay, and then it says we found four duplicates and we deleted the rest. So if you're somebody that likes to use the status bar to see quick information about certain data ranges, we can select a range and it'll actually give us um, the average, the count, the sum down here, but we can also right click and add things to that so we can see the max, the min. So it's almost like we get all of our descriptive statistics right down here, which is pretty cool. So it's not uncommon that we want to be able to view two spreadsheets at the same time. And the problem is if we go and we right click here and maybe I wanna pick one of my spreadsheets in a lot of the older versions of Excel, um, I'm on 16 right now, but on the older versions, a lot of them will actually open up that file within the same session of Excel and it won't allow you to view them at the same time. So what you can do instead is open up another instance of Excel um, and then it allows you to then dock both uh, spreadsheets at the same time. Or if you have two monitors, you can also dock them on the separate monitors then. If you find yourself doing a lot of repetitive tasks in Excel, then definitely check out macros or VBA coding. And just as a quick example, if we go down in this bottom left-hand corner, we can see this macro button. And if we click that, it'll prompt us to enter a new macro name. And then if we just give it a generic name and hit OK, and it is now recording our actions. So if we go and we type in one, two, three, and then we hit the stop button, and then we go to the view tab, and let's just delete this, and then go to view macros, test, select our test and hit run, we can see that it repeats the exact steps that we just did. And that's just a super, super simplistic example. There's tons of stuff you can do with this. So if you wanna see more on that, I definitely plan on having a lot of videos on that topic on my channel, so check them out. If you find yourself using the same commands all the time, there's some customizations we can do to the quick access toolbar. So this up here or any of the tabs here, we can edit as well. So if we go up here and we go to more commands, we can actually edit what buttons show on that quick access toolbar. And since we just made our first macro, let's go ahead and add that macro button up to our quick access toolbar. So if we select this drop down, hit macros, select our test macro and add that, hit okay. Now we have a button available for us and it'll actually run that macro anytime we select that button. Now there's also a ton of other tools in there, so make sure to check them out. You can go in here and kind of filter by different topics. Um, you can go to all commands and see, oops, sorry, it's gotta load all of them. And you can see all the different things that you could go and add to the uh, quick access toolbar. You can also go to this customized ribbon where you can look at all the tabs that are available to you and um, hide them, show them, edit what's in them, add things to different tabs, create your own tab even, um, lots of different stuff to play around with there. So check that out. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that one. To get more videos as they are released, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, make sure to like and share. And if you didn't like it, well, then leave me a comment and let me know how I can improve. Last but not least, this channel is for you. So if you have any suggestions for topics you want me to cover, make sure to let me know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.